History of the Horse, Part 3, The Origins of Equus During the Miocene epoch, North America saw the evolution of intermediate horses. One of the most important of these was Epihippus, marginal horse, which was slightly heavier, possibly weighing a few hundred pounds. Believed to have evolved from Orohippus, Epihippus was more robust with its grinding teeth than its ancestors, as well as continued growth of the middle toes. Because of the waves of tasty grass that covered North American plains, Epihippus was the first prehistoric horse to spend more time feeding in meadows than in forests. A new niche had opened up and prehistoric horses evolved to fill that gap. Equines were developing long legs to flee from predators and the teeth to leisurely graze on these rich grasses. From Perihippus, almost horse, came Myohippus, which can be considered the next step up in the Myohippus model. Then, Merichippus descended from Perihippus and lived during the middle and late Miocene epoch, 16.4 to 5.3 million years ago. Merichippus, a ruminant horse, was the largest of all the middle equines. The tooth pattern of Mary Chippus is basically the same as that found in the modern horse. The teeth became higher and dental cement appeared, which allowed them to graze on the lush plains of grass. Other upgrades in the development of the skeleton are also evident. Its size increased so that it was almost as large as a modern pony and the skull became more elongated to look very horse-like. The limbs became more horse-like in proportion and better adapted to running. In some forms, the three toes remained comparatively large, but in progressive species of Merichippus, the two side toes were short and small. As you can see, the center toe was much larger than the others and carried most of the animal's weight, and a well-developed hoof was present on the large central toe. During the Miocene period with Perihippus and Merichippus, the ancestors of the horse had truly moved out of the forests and swamps and onto the plains. Next, how these ancestors began to change to get ready for the first truly single-hooved horse. Thank you for watching. For more information, go to our